My friend Lisa made the no potato mashed potatoes and you can watch that YouTube video as well. And she asked me if I ever made a shepherd's pie with it. And I thought that's brilliant. I love the idea of using one of my recipes to make another recipe. So the only problem is that I really hate shepherd's pie. But what I don't like about it is I'm not a meat and potato kind of girl, but I do like the idea of the vegetables, the corn and the peas and the carrots and the that kind of stuff. I just don't really like heavy meat. And my no potato mashed potato is made with cauliflower. So I was thinking, what can I make with those ingredients that taste good? And I thought maybe like a curry. Well, there's a lot of curry in Tibet and in Tibet they use Sherpas. So instead of a shepherd's pie, I'm making for you today Sherpa's pie. Sherpa's pie, really, really. Yes, Chachki, I did say that. There's a couple of things I love about this recipe besides the way it tastes. First of all, it's really easy. And second of all, you can do this ahead of time and then put it away in the refrigerator and then just put it in the oven when you wanna eat dinner. I'm a morning person, I get up early, I go work out, and I have all this energy first thing in the morning, but come dinner time, I'm like a lump. So I really like to get all of my prep work done early when I have the energy to do so. So we're gonna start by chopping the onions. I'm gonna use two regular sized or smallish onions. If I had a big onion, one onion would be enough. And I'm just gonna chop onion goggles on, and the chopping starts. I have two teaspoons of olive oil, extra virgin, heated up in my pan, and I measure carefully because I am watching points, and I'm just gonna put my chopped onion into this pan now. Just gonna cook these onions until they get soft. A few minutes on medium heat. While the onions are starting to brown, I'm going to bloom my spices. That means you're gonna put your spices into this oil mixture and that brings out a lot of the flavor, unleashes the spice flavor. And what I have here is one tablespoon of the following, curry powder, garam masala, turmeric powder, and cumin. And I just did one tablespoon of everything because it's so easy. One tablespoon of it all goes in and we're gonna bloom this in the oil and onions. You will start to smell it, and it smells delicious. My onions have been cooking for a few minutes, and they're nice and golden from all of those spices and from being on the stove. I'm stirring occasionally until they look nice and soft. And you can really smell the curry flavor. It smells so good. And now I'm gonna put in a pinch of salt. You can always add more. And the salt I like to use is this Celtic sea salt. People ask me all the time what kind of salt I cook with. I cook with this. I know a lot of people use Himalayan sea salt. I'm sure that's a good choice too, but I've done some research and the minerals in the Celtic sea salt are really, really good for you. So I like to use this for cooking. I'm going to add two packages of ground white meat, turkey meat, right into my onions and spices. So at this point I realized, oh crap, my ingredients are not gonna fit in this pan. I had to switch pans into something a little bit bigger. So I did, and now it's in the right pan because we have a lot more things to add. We're gonna keep stirring and breaking up the turkey meat until it's completely cooked through. And now we're gonna add the fresh ginger. Fresh ginger is super healthy and it adds so much flavor. One of my favorite tools ever is this microplane. I use it all the time and I keep my fresh ginger root in the freezer. It makes it really easy to grate and it stays a lot longer. So how much ginger? Some, 
A lot of cooking for me is not measuring, it's just adding ingredients, tasting it, guessing, and kind of going from there. So I'm not really gonna measure this, I'm just gonna say some. And I'm gonna grate this right on in. If you do use too much ginger, it will get a bite to it, a little bit spicy. Not a bad thing. I always think more is better when it comes to flavor. But you can always add some and then taste it and see where you're at. Like I said, I like a lot of ginger, so I used however much I used. This will go right back in the freezer. I don't have to waste any of it. I'm gonna slowly mix this up now that the ginger's there. And from here, I'm gonna add one whole bag of frozen peas and carrots. I like organic. And I'm just gonna put the whole bag in because who likes to be stuck with half a bag or a partial bag of anything? I don't. I like to use whole bags of things to make it easy. So right from the freezer, right into the pan, a whole bag. Some casualties, get back in there. Mix it in, stir, and then I'm gonna add some corn. I get this giant bag of organic corn from Costco. I think it's super easy because you can just use as much as you want. And I'm gonna add with the rest of this bag, which I don't know how much it is, maybe, maybe a cup. Doesn't really matter. If you like corn, put more in. So I'm just gonna dump this frozen corn in, probably a little less than a cup, because that's what I happen to have. And mix it together. So the final ingredients I have to add to this are is one giant can of diced tomato. I'm gonna to put the whole can in. and stir it together. And because my turkey meat is cooked, I'm gonna turn the flame off now and just incorporate this. And I know I didn't add any salt and pepper into the turkey meat itself. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna put a pinch of salt in and quite a bit of cracked pepper. Whenever you use turmeric, you're supposed to eat that with black pepper. It brings out the health benefits of the turmeric. So think of turmeric, think of black pepper, and don't be shy with it. I've let this cool down a little bit and now I'm just gonna taste it to see if you need to adjust the salt. It definitely needs a little bit more, but it's really good. So I'm gonna take a pinch. Remember, you can always add more, you can't take away. Stir that up. And I'm going to add some sriracha because my family likes it pretty spicy. Except for me, I don't like it too spicy, but a little bit. So I'm going to just squirt some in. It's up to you if you wanna add any and how much. And I just kinda of do a little like that. That's what I can handle and if they want more, they can add it at the end. But that to me is gonna be enough. It's all cooled down and I transferred it to this beautiful pot that can go in the oven. So my youngest son, BP, as we call him for bottomless pit, actually doesn't like the no potato mashed potato recipe. So we saved some for him without it. So he will have this for dinner and the rest of us will have Sherpa's pie. So all I'm gonna do now is top it with the no potato mashed potato that I made yesterday. I love things that I can prepare ahead of time like this. And I'm just gonna top it like you would a regular shepherd's pie, but as we know, this is just the cauliflower. Remember, this is a little bit green because I did use the stems and the core of the cauliflower. If you want just a beautiful white color, you can just take out the florets of the cauliflower and it will not have a tinge of green like mine does. But we go for health around here. Health and taste together. Okay, now I'm gonna kind of give it a rough topping because then it browns a little bit nicer. So I kind of make little rivets in the top like this, and that way it'll get hopefully brown on top rather than a smooth surface. And next, I'm just gonna take a pinch 
of some paprika and put on the top for color. And like I've mentioned in previous videos, I always take off that little top thing that I hate because you can barely get any out. Only now I see why it would actually be quite useful to have that because then I could do a nice sprinkle rather than having to get my hand dirty. But oh well, I don't have it. So now I'm just gonna give it a little zoops for color. And that's it, my hands are clean. And this is gonna go in the refrigerator until I'm gonna put it in the oven for dinner tonight. See you later. It's dinner time. All I did was I took it out of the refrigerator and put it in a hot oven at 425 degrees for 20 minutes, I baked it. And then for the last few minutes, I put it under the broiler just to get the ridges nice and crispy. And then we just serve it up and this is dinner. There's going to be lots of color, lots of flavor. You're going to have a little bit of spice from the sriracha, tons of flavors from those from the curry we made, and then a nice cooling flavor from the no potato mashed potato. Thanks for watching, and to see more of my videos, please subscribe to my channel and also turn on notifications so that you get notified every time I have a new video that comes out.